Hi, welcome to module number 17. Uh, this topic we are going to look into WAN technologies. Here we have four topics. Uh, first, we look into overview of early WAN technologies. Just to give you some heads up, then we look into PPP implementation and configuration. Then we look into PPPoE or point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet implementation and configuration. So we are going to look into uh, both the configuration of PPP and PPPoE. And lastly, we look into development of the newer WAN technologies. So let's look into the overview of what is a WAN. A WAN is a network that connects LANs in different areas. A WAN generally covers tens of kilometers to thousands of kilometers, so it is really very wide area. It can connect multiple regions, cities, and country or provide long distance communication across several continents, forming an international remote network. So let's look into this topology. In this diagram, we have the WAN. This part in the middle here is a WAN, and it is normally managed by the service provider or internet service provider. Here we have the LAN. This is also the LAN here. So the LAN normally is close to each other. And if you want to connect two LAN together, you are going to use the router here, and uh, you are going to subscribe to the service provider. Same go for the enterprise branches over here as well and the residential area. So let's look into the LAN and the WAN in more detail. So what are the differences between a WAN and a LAN? The definition of a LAN. A LAN is a computer network that covers a small geographical area. Typically, it's a couple of hundreds meters uh, that you are using mostly switches and a router that connect to your service provider. So these are typically a LAN. Whereas a WAN, uh, as on the previous slide that I mentioned, you are going to use a service provider, okay? It's least ISP, and you are connecting through a wide area network. So let's look into the definition of a WAN. A WAN is a computer network that cover a wide area by leasing an uh, internet service provider network or building a private network. So this is a WAN. So I hope you understand the difference between a LAN and a WAN. Generally, LAN is within a small geographical area where WAN you really need to cover a very huge area and typically you connect router to router. Then we look into the overview of early WAN technology. So we go back to the history and we look into before the current WAN technology we have, many years back, what are the technologies? The early WAN and LANs differ in data link layer. If you still remember, uh, we learned this uh, in the previous topic about OSI. Data link layer is a layer two and physical layer. So WAN are differ in terms of the physical connector as well as the data encapsulation and are the same in other layer in TCP IP reference model, which means that from transport layer all the way to application, generally they are the same, except that on level one or layer one and layer two, they are not the same. So let's look into the reference model over here. So we have our TCP IP reference model. Uh, they are different in the physical layer and the data link layer. Now first is the LAN technology. LAN technology typically defined under IEEE 802.3 slash 4 slash 5 or slash 11. These are the common standards that we are using, 802.3 and 802.11. So dot .4 and dot .5 are technology that we are seldom used nowadays. And then we also have a WAN technology. As stated early on, we have layer 1 a connector, which is primarily we use RS-232. This is a very legacy connector many, many years back when we use mainly for the mainframe or terminal. Then we also can use V.24, V.35 for using PPP or HDLC. And we also have G.703 for the uh, uh, ATM encapsulation. So these are all the encapsulation that we can actually use, point-to-point -point protocol, uh, high-level data link control, frame relay, and a synchronous transfer mode. Most of the uh, protocol here include the ATM, frame relay, are uh, obsolete. We seldom 
uh, see this in the life. You may still see it, but uh, we are moving into newer technologies such as MPLS and segment routing. We are going to cover that later on, so not to worry too much now. Next, we look into the WAN device role. Uh, there are three basic roles of WAN devices. So I want you to remember when the customers or your provider talk about the WAN, uh, they normally will use the terms such as customer H, CE, provider H, PE, and provider, which is P. So what are those CE, PE, and P? So we can summarize this in this particular diagram. Okay, so let's look into the definition of the CE. So CE is here in our diagram. These are the CE. So we have four CE here. CE is a device located at the customer premises. So here we have the customer premises and connected to one or more PE. So as you can see that the CE, this connection link, are connecting to the PE. So that is what we call the CE. So it's a customer H. It resides at the customer premises. Then we also have a PE. PE stands for Provider H. Uh, it is a service provider important H device that's connected to both CE and the PE. So you can see that the PE connecting to the CE and it's also connecting to the P router or Provider router. So the PE is a Provider H. It locate this router locate at the service provider data center. And finally, we also have the P. P stand for provider, a service provider device that is not connecting to any CE. The P router only connect to the PE router. As you can see here, they are connecting to all the PE router. So the P connecting to PE, PE connecting to both the CE and the provider. So these are the WAN device role. If you are the customer, you're able to see only the customer H router. The rest the customer will not able to see because it's all managed by the uh, provider. Next, we look into application of early WAN technology. Here, we are going to look into some of the uh, application that being used. The early WAN technology perform different layer two encapsulation. As its name suggests, encapsulation means that you are going to take the data and then you are going to add the header. At which level? The header is being added at the layer 2, we call data link layer, for different type of physical uh, links, which include PPP, HDLC, and uh, frame relay, are commonly used uh, between CE and PE to implement long distance transmission of user access packet over a WAN. ATM is commonly used on the ISP backbone network for high speed forwarding. So, as you can see from here, we have a CE connecting to the PE. Normally, they are going to use this encapsulation PPP slash HDLC slash FR. You can choose one of these encapsulation protocol. Once you connect to the PE, the PE will connect to the P router and typically they are using a synchronous transfer mode. So here, this location that I box up here, these are all the service provider network. So these are the application of early WAN technologies. 